From the beginning, the devil has tried to instill in us a sense of guilt. We read in the very beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, that when Adam and Eve sinned, they hid themselves. And God says, why are you hiding? Well, we are naked and we are afraid, and so we begin to hide. And who told you that you were naked, says God? The evil one, of course, the one who accuses you in your life, the one who wants to instill in you a sense of guilt. The objective of our life is to return to the Garden of Eden, to rediscover what we had lost, which is heaven. Adam and Eve lived in heaven. And so God wants you to return to live in heaven that is in his presence. And God wants you to have this presence now. If you live a depressed life, an anxious life, a fear-filled life, you are living in hell. That's precisely where the devil wants you to be. Do you want to live in hell or do you want to live in heaven? That is the question. Hell is the absence of God. And you don't have to wait for the afterlife to experience hell. You can live it right here if you do not have God in your life because God is heaven. If I have God, I have heaven. And having God means that everything is going to be okay in my life. I will be just fine. It's all going to be okay. Play that Bob Marley song. Every little thing is going to be all right. Yeah. If you've got God, you've got heaven. We lost that through our first parents. We lost heaven. And now we need to rediscover it. Get it back. Get your groove back, in other words. Get it back. Get back to heaven. That's what Lent is all about. Why would Jesus go into the desert? Because in the desert were all the outcasts, all the rejects, all the societal rejects were there. All the sick people. Remember, during Jesus' time, if you were sick, you were cast out. If you had any type of disease, you were made to feel guilty because your parents did something to cause this to you. Or you did something in your past. And what did Jesus say about the blind man? Neither he sinned nor his parents sinned. He's blind to reveal the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Get back to paradise in other words. Jesus goes into the desert in order to rescue all those who are there, to accompany them and to get them out of that hellish place, that desert place where there's no water. 
where they feel like they're drowning, suffocating. Mm. And you may be feeling that in your own life because there's a lot of demons out there who are trying to get you into hell with them. Don't allow them. Don't let them. God wants you in heaven. But the choice is yours. Whether you go to heaven. Remember, you know, one of the things that strikes me is a lot of people believe that Jesus came to take them to heaven. No. Jesus came to bring us heaven. Because he is heaven himself. If you've got Jesus, you've got heaven. And God wants you to be joy-filled. Read John chapter 15, verse 11. I have told you all these things that your joy may be complete, that you may have joy in your life. God wants you to have joy. Mm -hmm. We live in a time of great fear right now. I have uh, relatives that live in the Ukraine, in the western part of Ukraine, near Ivano Franks, not too far from Lviv. That's because after the Second World War, my family moved to what used to be Germany in the Council of Yalta and the meeting between President Roosevelt, FDR, and Churchill and Stalin, the dictator of the Soviet Union, they carved up the map of Europe and took German lands and gave them to Poland and then took Polish lands and gave them to the Soviet Union, which is today the lands that are in the Ukraine. And that's where my, parent, my uh, grandparents lived. And then they, they were forcibly transported into the lands where I was born. But many of my relatives did not go. And so there's a lot of Polish people still in Western Ukraine, which used to be Poland. And some of them are my relatives. And I went to visit them back in 2017. I spent three weeks in the Ukraine and I've never encountered such poverty, not even in Mexico, as I did in the Ukraine. Wow. People living on less than $30 a month. Extreme poverty. And so my heart is, of course, very heavy at this time. And there's a lot of fear in us. What's going to happen? Mm. All those fears are from the devil. There's nothing you or I can do about tomorrow. We can only live today. When Mother Teresa was asked by a reporter who was interviewing her, Mother, what is the most important thing in your life? During the interview, the reporter asks her, and she says, this interview, this is the most important thing in my life. What is the most important thing in your life? Right now, this moment, live the moment. Jesus says that very plainly. Do not worry about tomorrow. Today has enough problems of its own. Every hair on your head is counted. So important are you to your heavenly father. Stop worrying about nuclear warfare or third world wars or this or that. You live your life with God in your life. And if God is with you, who can be against you? Huh? God is much more powerful than any Putin. Huh? He may think, he may think mm, he's all-powerful. 
Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, of course, a great atheist, he once cynically asked, well, how many tanks and battalions does the Catholic Church have? Huh? How many armies does the Catholic Church have? And what happened to the Soviet Union with all their armies and battalions and nuclear warfare? Psh. Huh? And so the, likewise it will happen with this current dictator and with all dictators. Huh? Fear not. God is in charge. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to be okay. You will be okay. Your family will be okay. Stop worrying about the wars that are being raged out there and worry about the war that is being waged inside of you. Mm -hmm. That is the battle that you need to win against the evil one. Hmm? Fight that one. Fight the war that is inside of you that is trying to make you feel guilty. Maybe I did something, you know. Maybe our country did something. And, you know, since I'm part of this country, you know, maybe this, huh? Or uh, if only I was better. Hmm? The only way we can get back to paradise is if we recover what we lost. And that is, we lose the sense of guilt and shame. Hmm? Adam and Eve were in paradise and they ran around without underwear. Hmm? Drop your underwear. <laughs> huh? In other words, drop your sense of shame. The devil wants you to be filled with shame about what you did huh? or what you didn't do. God doesn't have a memory. Why do you? You know, we're in the Church of the Divine Mercy. Look at the picture there in the front. Jesus has his arms outstretched doing what? Blessing. Bless, when you bless somebody, you tell them good things. That's where the word comes from. Benedice. No, use your Latin and Italian uh, here. Uh, good speech. When I tell you, you are wonderful. When I tell you, you smell nice. When I tell you, you are forgiven. Uh, I'm blessing you. Those who bring you down, they are cursing you. Maledicere. Huh? That's what the devil does. He wants to curse you. Jesus is here to bless us. And that's what he's doing. He's got his arms outstretched. And look at that picture. Where does that picture come from? It comes from Poland. Huh? All good things come from Poland. <laughs> <laughs> and... When St. Faustina, the Polish nun, who Jesus was appearing to, when Jesus said, go and tell the priest that I'm appearing to you, she went and she told him, and did the priest believe her? Nope. No. Nope. And so he says, I won't believe you unless you ask Jesus to tell you what I told him in my last confession. And so Faustina goes and says, Jesus, you know, the priest won't believe me unless you, unless you tell me what he told you, what he told you in his last confession. And Jesus says to Faustina, go and tell that priest that I do not remember. Huh? <laughs> go and tell that priest that I do not remember. Oh! Your sins have been paid for. Your sins are wiped out, forgiven. Huh? Like th this is what your soul is, white. Huh? 
I just forgave you all, all your sins. The problem is, is you don't believe it. Because hmm? you, you have the, the cassette being repeated about everything you've done. Huh? You know, that maybe I cheated in the past or I had an abortion. Huh? And, you, and you repeat it. I wasn't a good mother. Hmm? I stole. I lied. Hmm? I did this. I did that. And people, people make you feel that way. The devil comes in our life with the people. That's why I wear my St. Benedict rosary with the blessed and exercised medal. Because I have to be protected from who? From all of you. <laughs> huh? People tell me all sorts of stuff that brings me down. They curse me. All I have to do is open the internet, which I don't. You know, lots of people cursing me. People come all the time. They're trying to bring you down as well. No! The Bible says, resist him solid in your faith. Hmm? Huh? You know, there's a lot of sense of guilt in us. We have to rid ourselves of that to live the life that Jesus wants us to live. And I pray for that during these 40 days for each and every one of you and for myself. But for that, we need a dose of humility. All of us. That we are not the last Coca-Cola in the desert. That you, the, the, the man who was the smartest man to live before Jesus Christ, Socrates, he said, all I know is that I know nothing. Socrates said. I remember, you know, when I was going to Oaxaca, the place in Mexico where I lived, and I was going there with this attitude, I'm gonna teach these people. Cause I have all these degrees, you know, and I do. I mean, I've got, you know, a couple master's degrees and a bachelor's degree, a BA. All I'm missing is a, um, uh, a BS degree. You know, <laughs> I don't have that one. <laughs> so I was going there with this attitude, I'm gonna teach these people. Because I'm from the United States. Huh? Mm. <laughs> you know. And I've gone to the seminary and I, I, I know all this stuff. Huh? And it was they who taught me. Who taught me how to be a priest. Taught me how to be a Christian. Hmm? In their simplicity. I got there in the mountains and I stayed with a family that had 16 children. Mm -hmm. One mother, one father. And I prepared to go there with a toothbrush. I bought myself a new toothbrush and they didn't have a bathroom inside the house. So I brushed my teeth at night and left my toothbrush outside. And I get up in the morning and to my surprise, one of the 16 kids is brushing his teeth with my toothbrush. <laughs> and I said, oh no, I can share anything besides my toothbrush. And at that, he picks up the one toothbrush that they had for all 16 kids and two adults. And he says, don't worry. Because my expression had changed and I became visibly angry. He picks up the one toothbrush they had for everybody and he says, don't worry. You can also use our toothbrush. <laughs> uh, isn't that the attitude of heaven? Read the Acts of the Apostles, how people lived, the first Christians. That's how they lived. You know, when people ask Christians, you know, in the early church, and we have great writings about that that I read all the time. They ask them, who are you people? 
And they would say, we are those who have already celebrated their funeral. We are those who have died so as to live. Died to this life so as to live to the life of heaven, the life of God. And what did they do? Did they tell people? They showed them. They went to the Colosseum and were martyred and gave their life for Jesus. Hmm? They showed them. Who are you people? Let, let us show you. And they showed them. Because they died so as to live. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will just remain a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it will produce great fruit. What is my wish for all of you for Lent? That you die hmm? to this life so as to be born to the life again. Jesus said that very clearly. Unless you are born again, you will not have life within you. You've got to be born again to the life of heaven. Hmm? It's not, you know, I'm not calling you all to start sharing toothbrushes. We can go to the dollar store and pick up a bunch. Of, it's the attitude huh, that we need to change. Our attitude. That's what conversion is about. The word conversion, metanoia in Greek, nous. Mind, a change of mind. Metanoia, you know the word meta? Like metaphysics, above, that's the Greek word for above, or metamorphosis. Mm. In other words, Jesus, when he says change, what is he saying? Get into your above mind. Think, of, think with the mind of heaven. What's the opposite of the word parent, uh, metanoia? I just told you. Mm. What is the opposite of the word metanoia in Greek? Paranoia. You know that word? Don't we have it in English too? Paranoia is fear, which is what God wants to rid you of and what the devil wants to fill you with. Fear. No. Crush the head of the devil. No paranoia. Metanoia. Hmm? How many times does the phrase do not be afraid appear in the Bible? 366 times. Mm -hmm. You think God has a message for us? Do not be afraid that everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. For that, you got to lose the attitude of all the rulers of the nations. All the so-called, you know, big shot people who got PhDs and everything else. You know what PhD stands for? You know, piled high and deeper. <laughs> you didn't know that? Lose that attitude. Why is it that we have Putin doing what he's doing and others, you know, throughout the world? Because they want power. They want control. The first Christians followed Jesus, who lost control, didn't he? Yeah, he just, you know, didn't respond. Put his arms on the cross and... Hmm? We follow Jesus. Our power is in dying here. And Jesus said that very clearly. He says, why are you so afraid of the people who can do something to your body? Be more afraid of the one who can do something to your soul. Hmm? All is well with my soul. And then all is well with me. So that is my one wish for all of you for this coming Lent. That you experience that metanoia. And don't be thinking now about, you know, what I'm going to be giving up for Lent. Let's, you know, I'm going to say, just because I can, how stupid to think about what you're going to give up for Lent. If something is bad, why would you give it up for 40 days and then go back and do it? <laughs> give it up forever. Hmm? 
Think of what you need to give up and do it forever. Not that I'm going to stop eating meat. No, stop eating human flesh better huh? with your tongue. And I got one message for everybody for Ash Wednesday. Get your ash in church. <laughs> Get your ash in church. <laughs> 4 p.m. in English on Ash Wednesday. Get your ash in church. <laughs> ash, I said. I